Steele. Here. Council Member Landau. Here. And Mayor Pro Tem to start six. Here. And Mayor Moore. Here. All we'll present. Move to oral communications. At this time, members of the public may address the council regarding items on the agenda. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the council cannot discuss or take action on any items not on the agenda unless authorized by law. Matters not on the agenda may, at the council's discretion, be referred to the city manager and placed on a future agenda. Those members of the public wishing to speak are asked to come forward to the microphone and state their name for the record. All speakers will be limited to a period of five minutes. Speakers must address their comments only to the mayor and entire city council and not to any individual member of the staff or audience. Any documents for review should be presented to the city clerk for distribution. Do we have any oral communications tonight? Hello, uh, my name is Matthew Terry. I live in Old Town Seal Beach. Um, I wanted to just comment on some of the projects that were kind of listed out in the, the CIP. Um, I don't. I was a little busy today, so I didn't wasn't able to prepare something. So if I sound a little incoherent, just it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I just want to mention. Um, so I saw that there was two projects um, down at the beach lots, the resurfacing of the beach lot, and then the ADA ramp. Uh, what I would just one thing I want to suggest is before you know you, those projects happen to kind of just take a step back for a second and kind of take a broader look at how that whole area circulates from a perspe uh, pedestrian perspective because right now um, there's a lot of entry points from uh, like a, from a, a pedestrian circulation that just kind of dead end into the parking lot and that kind of is a kind of a letdown from an experience standpoint like I live on the south side uh, of Old Tyler Seal Beach I uh, walk on the boardwalk all the time and when I want to, and it's, you know, obviously it's a great walk, but then if I want to get over to Main Street, I have to walk through the middle of a parking lot. And, um, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of, it's not too big of a deal, but it became more obvious how kind of annoying it is when um, I had a kid now. And basically now um, you take this really great pedestrian experience and then you have to transfer over into the middle of a parking lot and dodging cars. And so I really think that, um, some time should be spent looking at that and kind of just master planning out how people connect from Eisenhower Park, how people connect from um, the, the south, uh, south Side Boardwalk um, when you're walking and how you can, you can easily kind of envision something that doesn't disrupt you know, the, the parking lots and kind of keep what's there. But it, and I really think if you're gonna put the money into it, also kind of look at it from that per type of perspective. Um, also, just another thing to add, I'd suggest maybe for future reference for maybe next year's budget or things like that, what would be really cool is to add a, uh, a north side boardwalk. I don't know why south side just has the boardwalk and not the north side. It seems really incomplete. I, you know, I walk, I walk that at Seal Beach all the time. I walk that boardwalk <laughs> all the time and 99% um, of the time, I just stop right at Main Street, go down Main Street and then come back. Um, if you had a north side boardwalk, you could go from jetty to jetty um, to like the first street park um, down the green belt. Um, that would be an amazing experience to be able to do something like that. I, it should, I, I, that's something that would be really cool to have. Um, the PCH, I saw that the, um, in the, oh, oh, is there a timer? I, I don't know how much time I've left. Um, PCH, I saw that there was planting. There's a, some, something in their kind of line item about talking about po possibly putting planting um, in the medians. Um, I think that there's a lot that needs to get done on PCH. Right now, it's basically like a pseudo freeway bisecting two pedestrian friendly neighborhoods. And it really makes that whole corridor really hostile to people. And I really think that, you know, planting is great. It, the comedians look like crap. And so, but I really think that, I know obviously Sylvia doesn't have too much control over that, but really should kind of start working with Caltrans about really re-envisioning that, that whole entire corridor um, to make it, um, you know, more hospitable to people, especially with the, you know, the, with the current development, the rezoning that you're, that's happening at Old Town Center um, uh, and, and making that, uh, you know, more dense. And you could really imagine PCH growing into um, almost a, like a pseudo, it's kind of similar to Main Street, um, if, if just more time was spent to make it more friendly to people. Um, also, um, I noticed that um, 
the, uh, the you know, there's that, that gap that's being closed at um, uh, Lampson for the bike path. I wanted to just mention that um, I, don't, I, I ride my bike a lot. Um, I'd really encourage the council to really get a feel for what like a class one, two, three, four bike lane feels like and actually ride those bike lanes and really understand what you're really putting in when you put in a class two bike lane. They're not that great. They're not very comfortable, especially when you have high-speed traffic right next to you. I'd really encourage you all to kind of really feel what a, like a protected bike lane feels like versus unprotected bike lanes. It, it's, it makes a world of difference. 30 especially, seconds to wrap up. How much time? 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Okay. Um, also, that really gets to my, the really one that really, I would really love to see the city really push Caltrans to kind of put together is the OC loop. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a loop, a bike, a protected bike lane loop that goes from um, Santa Ana River, San Gabriel River, and connects on the north and south ends. Um, it's real. It's almost complete, except um, one of the sections be on PCH between Anderson and uh, Seal Beach Boulevard um, that still hasn't been um, completed. Um, obviously, that's just it's in, it's it's been proposed a long time ago. Time no action has was ever expired. taken. I'd really uh, suggest just taking a look at it. That'd be really good. Thank you. Any other public comments? Okay. Move on to the workshop. Um, I just wanted to do a little intro. Um, based on last night, I, my number one takeaway was that the economy is slowing a little and expenses are outpacing revenue, <clears throat> making it more difficult in the future years to balance the budget. Um, when I look through the budget, I look for anomalies where revenue and expense varies quite a bit from the previous year. And the items that stood out to me were the higher you know, salaries, pension costs, and medical expenses, and the increase in fire costs and insurance. And most of the other items didn't stick out as much. But revenue seems to be a little easier to predict. But I am happy this year the balance, budget is balanced, and the, I feel the financial team did a great job breaking down the revenue and expenses last night in many graphs and explanations. Uh, by department and by fund, uh, making it very clear to the council and to the public where money is being spent. And tonight I look forward to additional questions from council members, analysis of the five-year plan and discussion on CIP projects. And if possible, I'd like to get consensus on the ARPA uh, money. And I'll turn it over to the city manager. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, in, just in follow-up to last night's meeting, I'm gonna go ahead and turn um, the initial part of the presentation over to Barbara Arnato, our finance director, just to give you a brief um, snapshot of what we presented last night in terms of general fund revenues and expenditures. And then we'll turn the presentation over to our public works director, Iris Lee. And she, just as our, uh, the rest of our department directors did last night, will present her public works department um, overview of the budget. And then she will um, lead that right into our capital improvement program. Um, budget presentation, and then we will also talk about um, the five-year financial forecast as well as the Seal Beach Revitalization Plan. Of course, encourage you to ask questions as we move along through the presentations. And so with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Barb. Thank you, City Manager. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. Today is the second day of the fiscal year um, proposed 23-24 budget. Today we will present the proposed budget overview, public works department, the capital improvement program like the city manager just mentioned, the outlook and the revitalization plan. I wanna take a go back from last night and I wanna thank two people, Sean Sabo who's, who worked hard in public works and also Tracy Yanamura who had spent countless hours with our team, um, with Elena and I and working and putting the book together and many snafus with Excel and I wanna really reach out to those staff members and say thank you, so I really appreciate them. Moving forward, uh, the fiscal year 23-24 general fund budget is balanced with approximately 20,000 remaining. Overall revenues increased by 3.5% or 1.4 million. Appropriations or planned expenditures increased by 4.2% or 1.7 million from the previous budget. Capital improvement programs from the general fund and Tidelands fund is approximately 11 million. And Director Lee will be going over citywide CIPs in her presentation in just a moment. 
This year, general fund and CIPs includes the pool, finalizing the tennis and pickleball center, as well as the new, the new emergency peer repairs. Additionally, before we move on to public works, Council Member Kalmick asked ab about parking revenue yesterday, and I will pass that over to Chief for a quick update. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, yeah, last night, uh, Councilman Kalmick asked about uh, potential parking revenues, um, should we raise rates in the beach lots? And as I said last night, <clears throat> the overarching goal of the parking program is compliance, uh, equitable access to the curb, and uh, e uh, ease of parking for all the visitors to Seal Beach. Uh, revenue is a byproduct, but it is worthy of discussion because it factors in so heavily with the budget. After last night, we consulted with our parking consultant and uh, found that, uh, as I said last night, while 300,000 is a, a rough estimate, it was fairly accurate. It could fluctuate anywhere from 225,000 to 300,000 with a 50 cent increase by hour. There's a lot of factors that go into raising rates in uh, parking and it's uh, part of a more comprehensive discussion but there are some limitations on what we can and can't do, and um, most of that, or not most of that, some of that is imposed by the Coastal Commission who will, would be reluctant to allow sweeping large changes to rates. Um, generally, what we would see is uh, for the hourly rate, we would anticipate that they would uh, allow a 50, a 50 cent increase every other year to the hourly rate. Um, and while that uh, has a factor, um, is in, in important to the beach lots. It's important also to remember that um, all the parking in the downtown Main Street beach lots area are interconnected and um, imposing restrictions on some has effects on, on other parking within the Old Town Main Street beach area. Um, the estimate is based on current occupancy rates, actual purchases, and total transactions year to date. That's how we arrived at that number. Um, as I said, um, in order to improve parking equity, it's uh, important to try to encourage compliance and parking behavior, and that's done uh, through uh, rates, uh, it's done through enforcement, it's done through a variety of programs. What we see right now is um, the, while the beach lots are used, and in the summertime, um, uh, this, the average stay is uh, four hours during the summer, decreasing to three in the non-summer months, it's important to remember that because um, on Main Street uh, there is no uh, uh, cost for parking, that there are those who would utilize the Main Street area for parking because you can park for two hours, uh, move your car 150 feet, and then park for another two hours, and essentially obtain free parking for the beach. Um, the goal would be to encourage beachgoers to use the beach lots while allowing parking to be available to those who are visiting businesses or restaurants on Main Street. So um, as we have a discussion about uh, parking, parking rates, and uh, management of the parking program, it's just important to remember that uh, rate increases have effects on, on parking behavior and it's a comprehensive program. Thank you, Chief. Um, I'll pass it over to uh, Public Works Director Iris Lee. Good evening, <clears throat> excuse me. Good evening, Mayor, uh, members of the City Council, City Manager Ingram, and members of the public. Thank you for the opportunity to present the Public Works uh, Department budget tonight. While this is the last, it's certainly certainly not the least of the department budgets the presentations. And I want to take a moment to thank the department for their invaluable input, in particular, Management Analyst Sean Sabo that all the data crunching he did and finding those last minute pictures to put into the presentation so we don't, <laughs> we're not um, outdone by other departments. So to start off um, the agenda tonight, uh, we're gonna start with a quick department overview followed by the operation and maintenance budget that you, similar to the other departments you heard from and then the capital improvement program. 
So a public works mission statement is to provide innovative and sustainable city improvements and services through strategic planning, programming, budgeting, constructing, and maintaining of the city's infrastructure in a cost-effective way that meets the overall needs of the community. And to accomplish this, we divide and conquer through eight major disciplines that you see to the left of this, I'm sorry, to the right of the slide. These eight divisions include building, engineering and administration, fleet, landscape and parks, sewer, storm drains, streets, and water. While these divisions, some of them seem self-explanatory of what they do, there are certain areas that are covered but may not be as obvious, such as our department covers private development grading, fat oils and grease, commonly known as FOG, NPDES water quality, improve, um, quality compliance, grant management, traffic transportation, advocacy and legislation, GIS, coordination with utility companies, just to name a few here. These groups together make up our public works department infrastructure, operation, maintenance, and capital. So while we think of accomplishments, we generally gravitate towards high profile projects or high value, um, <clears throat> sorry, high value CIPs. However, I wanna take a moment to highlight our success in the routine day-to-day -day activities as well. Without it, the core of our department and organization would not be what it is. I'm talking about the plans we review, the beaches we clean, the trees we trim, the fleets we maintain, the asset we manage, the, and, and the ability to keep our staff trained and cross-trained to cover those emergency needs. These are services that we all learn to expect and frankly sometimes take for granted, but it does take a lot of hard work to maintain this level of service. This slide highlights the challenges that were considered when preparing the budget. These are unprecedented times, so there are a shortage of a lot, whether it be labor or material, that requires us to change the way that we do business. Depending on the source and type of construction that we're talking about, prices have increased around 50% in some places. Fill prices at the pump averaging about $5 a gallon. Utility prices has increased quite a bit. I'm sure everybody has seen it on their gas bill. And other consideration includes some of our legacy contracts that are expiring, and when, when we rebid it, the prices will go up. And while there's a shortage of resources, I'm gonna say that there's no shortages on mandates and regulatory requirements. They have compounded over the past few years, even as compared back to our pre-pandemic times, and we're doing everything we can with our available resources to address these ongoing needs. As you've heard from all our colleagues here, these are not isolated to public works at all. Another challenge is the response to changing climate conditions. Take this year for example, just even rewind up, about a year ago we were in a drought condition, but fast forward into winter, we, we experienced a series of atmospheric rivers that just brought on water conveyance issues and challenges. Another example is response to sea level rising and tidal condition changes as well. The good thing is that we have a dedicated and nimble team that we look for opportunities to cross train and optimize our workflow through technological enhancements, such as iWater, our asset and maintenance software, and the Energov software that our community development director Smittle is taking the lead on. We also do collective brainstorming, leveraging partnerships with like-minded agencies, and using our master planning documents as guidance to find ways to work smarter. With that, we're gonna dive into our O&M budget. I'm sure Finance Director Arenado could attest to Public Works having one of those budgets that have the most funding sources here. Um, to our left, we have a, a fairly colorful pie chart that has 12 different funding sources that make up Public Works. While heavily dependent on general funds, we do have funding sources from various restricted funds also, including SB1 RMRA, gas tax, Measure M2 local fair share, various CFDs, water, sewer, and other grant funding sources. To, together, they amount to $42.6 million. And the pie chart to your right shows 57% of that $42.6 million towards capital outlay, 30% towards O&M or operation and maintenance, and 13% towards personnel services. So let's talk about personnel services that amount to 13%. This budget is for 32.46 FTEs, or full-time equivalents. 
26 of them are full-time positions and 6.46 is our part-time FTEs. So our part-time positions are primarily our maintenance aides. Um, I do want to emphasize that these are budgeted positions and not necessarily bodies that are filling the positions. Our maintenance and operation covers day-to-day -day activities with different disciplines. Um, the list on the right, again, not comprehensive by any means, but we're talking about, say, traffic signal maintenance, making sure our signals are operating safely to facilitate traffic flows. Um, facilities and building where we take care of our building repairs, janitorial service, HVAC, plumbing, or just even keeping the lights on. Or our fleets where we keep every piece of our 80 pieces of heavy equipment or vehicles in operation. Nevertheless, there is an increase in our proposed overall budget compared to this current year's budget. And I want to take a moment to just go over that. Maintenance and operation budget is increasing by $1.2 million. Where possible, we try to reduce but not compromise our service levels. But a lot has to do with the overall pricing increases that we just previously discussed. For example, the landscaping and tree maintenance contract amounts to about $700,000 per year, but that agreement is expiring. Our winter sand berm contract amounts to about a quarter million dollars each year. That will likely need to be rebid as well. So that's just two of, out of our many legacy contracts that we're likely going to rebid and likely see pricing increase. Capital is increasing by $3.7 million. This is attributed to the carryover multi-year projects, which includes the community pool that Director Arenado spoke to yesterday, addition of new projects, and adjustment for pricing increases once again. So this concludes my department function and O&M budget overview. And I want to take a brief pause here to answer any questions you may have before we move on to the CIP portion of the presentation. Any, question, any questions by council? Well, I have Member some questions. Steele. <clears throat> I'm looking at uh, personnel services. Uh, last year, 4.6 million. This year, 5.5 million, $700,000 increase year over year. Are we adding headcount, or is it just the same number of bodies getting $700,000 more? So, if I may, um, the FTE count is fairly consistent, so a lot of it has to do with um, uh, labor contracts. Labor contracts. Are they direct employees, W-2s? City employees. City employees. Okay, not 1099s or outsides or anything like that. And uh, we're going up on m and Notice the jargon M and O. I'm picking up on this stuff now. Good. Yeah, uh, by 1.2 million, and that's because material costs are more, or is this inflation, or all of the above? So um, we have some uh, account. Uh, we're accounting for some of our labor um, increase. I'm sorry, uh, contract increases, such as uh, legacy contracts that we were talking about, increasing in material prices. In increasing in labor prices all around. So um, we did try to cut as much as possible um, and keep that level of service up. But unfortunately, there is still a pricing increase just to keep the business going. Okay. And that $20.5 million, uh, 22, 23, that uh, go to capital outlay, that money came out of capital account somewhere or is that coming? Um, I think uh, there's... Uh, the CIP slides will probably answer okay. your questions. And we're going up by 3.7 million this year. That's correct. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Council Member Kalman. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> in the circumstances of how we pay for contract services, is that we are still obligated to pay prevailing wage on any work that we have done by an outside contractor? <coughs> That's correct. Okay, thank you. And have we, do you know the, uh, have we started negotiating on the new contracts for the sand berm or the landscaping? Is, is that part of your 1.2? We have accounted for increase in pricing for those two contracts that we just spoke of. Um, and we try to anticipate it to uh, whatever market condition that we know of. Um, we are be releasing RFPs very shortly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Request for proposals. 
Can I ask another question? Yeah, go ahead. Not all of your budget comes out of, uh, you, uh, some of your budget is paid for by the businesses, the water and the sewer and stuff like that. Uh, so when you're talking about um, what your total budget is, is 42? Mm -hmm. And what percentage of that is uh, coming from the city? What percentage of that is covered by our uh, the fees for water and sewage? Um, I will have to come back to you for the exact percentage divide. Um, I would like it to the third decimal place, please. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. You can give me a ballpark, Iris. I'm, I'm fine with ballparks. I'll be happy to get back to you momentarily. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, well, um, moving right along to the proposed capital improvement program portion of the presentation, I do want to start off by saying that while Public Works manages the CIP, the program as a whole is a multi-departmental effort aimed to deliver our city needs. So going to CIP funding sources and council members feel this may help uh, answer the question that you had earlier about how we fund our CIP program. And um, starting out with the general fund, um, we that counts, I'm sorry, uh, Finance Director Arenado spoke to yesterday is one of the um, major funding sources. And then we have our restricted funds from the roadway standpoint, primarily gas tax, SB1 RMRA, and M2 local fair share. These are allocation-based funding, primarily from the state and the county. Again, for roadway improvements, which, is, which would include pavement, signing and striping, traffic signals, and the likes. Grants and special projects. Um, while we, we do apply for competitive and formulaic funding to augment our ca available cash, other times there are interagency collaborative opportunities that we like to take advantage of. For example, the partnership, um, the joint application partnership with Golden Rain Foundation that we applied for through OCTA's ECP grant funding that we uh, were awarded to install catch basin inserts to comply with the state board's trash amendment regulations. And uh, moving forward to our enterprise funding, we have our water and sewer enterprise funds. These are separate funds um, generated by water and sewer rates. And they're used specifically for water and sewer only. This covers both O&M and capital. This is a quick snapshot our, of our, what our infrastructure comprises of. Um, just going over a few, some of our buildings, uh, four community centers, one tennis and pickleball center, city port, city uh, support facilities such as City Hall or the police headquarters, IT. We talked about our fleet. We have 19 parks that we manage. Um, say storm drain, one pump station that services 11.15 square miles, streets 41.8 center line miles. And while we're a small city, we do pack a punch. So some unique factors as you know, we're a coastal community where we have to manage the beach and the pier. We have our own utilities, and many cities actually don't even own their own water and sewer, such as in the South County, um, water and sewer. City. And as our infrastructure ages, we need to invest more into upkeeping these valuable assets. So what are we doing to preserve these assets? I'm sure everybody is aware that we have um, interagency coordination activities going on with I-405 widening and the OC sanitation district upgrades along Westminster Avenue and the northerly part of town along Seal Beach Boulevard and Old Wretch Parkway area. Now, while this is not a city project, um, it does it is city facilities that we do use. Um, I'm sorry. It, it, they're not city facilities, but there are facilities that do impact the city operations. And this is where considerable effort is being spent to oversee their work, whether it be permitting, scheduling, public right of way, public outreach, inspections, compliance, agreement negotiations, and the like. We also have our Seal Beach Pier emergency repair. Um, as you know, we had sustained some damage over the winter storms and the reconstruction of the pier is ongoing right now and we are targeted to complete prior to the Memorial Day weekend. After that, we will be partnering with finance and police to, um, on the disaster, refund re disaster recovery funds. Lamps and Fiber and Seal Beach Boulevard TSSP. TSSP stands for Traffic Signal Synchronization Project. You're probably gonna 
hear me say TSSP more because traffic signal synchronization project is a little bit hard to say a few times. <laughs> so um, these are traffic signal related projects and um, the first one, Lamson Avenue Fiber, connects three of our additional signals um, to our traffic management system. And the Seal Beach Boulevard TSSP project upgrades our traffic signal equipment and introduces new signal timing along the arterial to enhance traffic flow. And finally, our Beverly Manor Well Rehabilitation that's ongoing right now. Um, another acronym I'm gonna use, it's called, we just call it BM Well. For those who are not familiar with the site, oh, I do use a lot of abbreviations. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for those who are not familiar with the site, um, it's not only home to one of our production wells out there, but it is also home to, I'm sorry, go back a slide, um, a four million gallon reservoir and a booster station. So this particular project um, will help us reestablish approximately 2,000 gallons per minute of uh, water supply production capability to ensure reliability. We also have some fun projects that are teed up and ready for construction. Um, this includes a tennis and pickleball center. Um, this will demolish the existing locker room and reconfigure our existing clubhouse to have a multi-purpose facility, um, locker rooms, and on-site lighting, just to name a few. And of course, we're very excited about this project. We also have some pure improvements that um, are teed up and ready to go as well. Starting off with our pure restroom restoration project. Um, design is complete and uh, we do have our permits in place, but given that the summer months are upon us, we're going to be delaying the um, actual construction of the project until after Labor Day weekend. Concrete pier abutment, this will address the concrete spalling and co corrosion issues that we have on the pier. Um, this project, again, is ready to go also, um, and we will start soliciting for construction bids upon budget adoption. And finally, the long-awaited Lamson Avenue bike trail project, where we will be introducing a Class 2 bikeway along Lamson Avenue between Seal Beach Boulevard and Basswood. This is a federally funded project. Um, we did get the green light from California Transportation Commission, CTC, for construction funding allocation. And as soon as Caltran is Caltrans issue us an uh, authorization to proceed and commonly known as E76, we will be soliciting for construction bids. So quite a bit of fun um, that's gonna be teed up. So shifting gears uh, to what we have on the horizon, starting off with our general fund projects. And this is not a comprehensive list, nor am I gonna go over every single one, but I do wanna highlight a few. West End Pump Station. I think most of you have heard of West End Pump Station now given our winter storms. Um, this is our storm, uh, storm water pump station that collects water from primarily the areas from the hill and Old Town and convey it into the San Gabriel River area. Um, like I said many times before, without the station being fully functional, this area will flood in a, a substantial storm. As such, we're recommending 190,000 uh, out of the fiscal year 23-24 budget um, to start immediate critical equipment replacement. We are also recommending to budget for um, necessary station upgrades in the immediate near future as well. Citywide technology led by our city manager's office, which convey, um, I'm sorry, covers IT master plan, IT upgrades, lifeguard headquarter interim, I wanna stress interim, communication connectivity, phone system upgrades and security system upgrades. Heather Park, this project is funded by Prop 68 per, per capita grant funding and also city matching funds. The intent is to upgrade the play area and at Heather Park it introduced new playground equipment encompassing a water age group. Moving on to streets and transportation amounting to approximately $7 million primarily funded by the roadway restricted funds that we spoke of earlier. From the roadway standpoint, street funds will include slurry sealing and pavement repair, such as Main Street, where we were gonna do uh, pavement rehabilitation and intersection redesign. Um, traffic signals include ongoing and timing coordination, sensitive equipment upgrades, which includes connectivity back to our traffic management center here at City Hall. And from the transportation standpoint, we will include multimodal efforts and safety improvements, such as the uh, soon to be new, more highly visible LED Chevron signs that would 
ironically be installed by the Chevron gas station. This year, we do have outside funding sources such as CRISA and PMRF funding. These are federal funds that will be repaving the Northgate Road 405 ramps at Seal Beach Boulevard intersection. As you all know very well, this area is heavily deteriorated from the 405 construction. Um, we do have also the Lamson bike lane that is partially funded by ATP funding, which is Active Transportation Program grant funding. And then finally, the Seal Beach Boulevard TSSP that we talked about, another competitive grant funding where we uh, were able to get OCTA Project P funding from that. This amounts to, again, $7 million. Our sewer system is funded by our sewer enterprise. The city operates a robust 35 mile six pump station collection system, which discharges into the OC sanitation district regional system. To make all this happen while complying with all our regulatory requirements, we need to ensure our infrastructure is inspected and properly maintained. So starting with pump station 35, this is one of our main wastewater collection systems that collects from areas such as Boeing, Naval Weapons Station, The Hill, and the Old Town areas. And it pumps into the OC Sands pump station at the northeast corner of Westminster at Seal Beach Boulevard. This is one of the multi-phases that we have planned for this facility. Um, upgrades will include emergency backup, emergency bypass, and mechanical upgrades. Manhole rehabilitation and main mainline point repairs. This is based off of our comprehensive sewer CCTV and cleaning uh, program that we have. And through that, we have ID'd um, the system conditions and will be systematically making improvements. And finally, SCADA improvement upgrades. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, which is the station's brain to gather, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> gather and analyze controls um, for our uh, station operations. So the sewer projects amount to approximately $3.4 million. And there are water projects where design and implementation are underway. As you probably have noticed, the $1.5 million isn't as high as an amount as the other disciplines that you saw. And this is primarily because there are a number of uh, significant water capital improvement projects and we're taking a step back and evaluating how to prioritize the construction and potential funding alternatives. We are bringing this item back to council with a recommendation at a later date. But in the meanwhile, th th this doesn't mean that we are stopping all our water system operations. Um, we are still continuing our day-to-day -day, um, operation maintenance needs, and we are still continuing with our project designs that are well along the way. Starting with uh, Lamson Well Treatment System. Uh, this is to treat um, water that is from one of our production wells to, um, by the Old Ranch Golf Course and CPE areas. LCWA Water Main Lining, which relines um, the transmission, transmission water line main that bisects the Hellman Ranch and Los Cerritos Wetlands area. This is another project that is substantially done with design yet we are waiting for our coastal development permit. Montecito water line relocation. Um, this project is in partnership with the 405 widening. Um, it's a project that where we have to relocate our water line to accommodate the freeway improvements. And also SCADA improvements similar to our sewer stations, we are doing upgrades at our water location facilities as well. So moving on, on Beyond um, our proposed fiscal year 23-24, um, I wanted to share a glimpse of what we anticipate in the future years, two, three, four, and five, which is fiscal year 24-25 to fiscal year 27-28. Project budget and schedules are included in your five-year CIP. However, I do want to emphasize that these are projections. Given today's climate, um, they are subject to change. So some CIPs that we're looking forward to include council chamber improvements, um, parking equipment upgrades, which is led by our police department, parking lot upgrades, including our beach parking lots, um, parks and uh, such as zoner field upgrades, um, ADA compliance, which includes um, the beach routes that start from Ocean Avenue going down to the beach area, pavement improvements, and various utility improvements as well. 
And I'm ending the CIP presentation with one last list. And this list is the unfunded CIPs we spoke of at our strategic planning meeting in April. These are all substantial needs. All of, uh, all of them are significant, but competing for limited funds. Our infrastructure is aging, but our programmatic, programmatic needs are ever increasing. Staff is continuing to look for partnerships and alternative funding sources, but nevertheless, this amount you see here is quite daunting. Unfortunately, there isn't a quick and easy solution to address all our needs, but staff will continue to bring back revenue growth opportunities for council's consideration. With that, that concludes our Public Works o and and CIP presentation, and I am open for any questions you may have. Anyone have <coughs> comments? You can start at the other end. Yeah. yeah. Councilmember Landau? No, that was pretty thorough. Thank you. Councilmember Steele? I still don't see the breakdown between general fund obligations, stuff that's going to come out of our budget, and I can see the city water and the sewage and the capital improvements there, and I know that doesn't touch us. In other words, that's segregated off, and so I'm still trying to figure out, out of our operating universe, how much of, of is coming out of ours. I mean, there's cap. We're spending a lot of money on capital improvement. I presume this is uh, on the docket for the next. Councilmember Steele, if I may, um, please. If you look on page 63 at the top, there's a breakdown of funding source um, in your 53. budget book. Yes, on page 63, the amount of the general fund, 63 and 64, I believe, and the amount of the general fund portion of Public Works is 5.2 million. Hold on, time out. Okay. Still going there. Is that the original 53 or the second 53? 60, 63. 63? And if you flip, what page is that? 63 and 64, I believe, of the new handout. Oh, it's, it's not the new handout. Intentionally left blank. Yeah, 64 is intentionally left blank, but I know you replaced some pages, so it's not I see 62. Hold on just a minute. Let me let me open my budget book. 53, 54. 53 and 54. 53 and 54. 52. Cinquenta y dos. Yes. <laughs> and that's the uh, new 53. Yes. I have my pages are commingled with the old and the new. So if you look at the top of that, page 53 um, and 54, um, at the top, very f top line, is the general fund portion. <clears throat> yes, I see that. And that would be Public Works' portion. Hold on, on Public 54. Works, Public Works, mm -hmm. City Manager. Second column, 54. Mm-hmm. Second column, 54. Very, very top. Elena's sitting there going like this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You'll, you're getting there, Nathan. Just hang in there. Council member, I, I can uh, walk you through it um, after if you'd like. And I can also show you in their department budget where those impacts are. It's really account code structure in the department budgets. So sometimes it's hard to see, you know, 101 and what each fund means. Mm -hmm. um, but they're interconnected. Um, also, at the back of the book, there's an account code structure where it tells you what they are, but we can walk you through it. I'd appreciate that. All right, thank you. We have to go a little bit slow for, for Councilman Steele here, so. I also want to point out at the very, very through. back of your book is not we just inputted it this year, it's new this year, is acronyms. We have a whole section on all the city acronyms. Oh, is that right? It's in the back of your book. Um, so, so the SPADA will be in that uh, table of contents? <laughs> thank you, Iris. And thank you, uh, Barb and Elena. Mayor Putam, Sister Sik. I wanted to ask about a question. I'm not, I, I just, it, it's like an ADA ramp from maybe Eisenhower down. Is that something that's in the, oh, I'm asking Iris. Um, is that something that's com coming up? Because a long time ago we were talking about that and it didn't get done and then I thought I saw it back in the, in the 
uh, CIP uh, list again. I was just curious, the gentleman that came in and spoke to us about movement, if that would be something that would uh, help uh, moving from the boardwalk through. Um, anyway, that, that, just, uh, that was just a question that came up to me, so thank you. We don't have specific details on the design quite yet, but as everybody is well aware, that slope is quite significant. So um, we may need to zigzag around it um, or maybe have to pull that ramp out a little bit more to make the proper grade. Um, so I don't have that concept design ready to go yet. But is it coming up in the near future? Yes, it is a budget in our five year or for our projection. Okay, thank you. Anything else? I think, yeah, I think that's all for right now. Councilmember Calmet. Yeah, uh, you know, with uh, without taking this line item by line item, or specifically what where projects fit into this, it's so much is coming in and so much is going out, and the bigger question is how do we solve that problem and how do we deal with that um, you know I, I see from my own analysis which is limited um, we don't have too many people working here in our city the people that we do have working here work very hard no matter what people might say from time to time including our council I don't mean the council is saying that our people, but people I think that we're not anything. working. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, so I, I don't think we're, we're either in a position, um, nor should we be looking at, at the personnel end of it. In other words, reducing the, peop the number of people that work here. We've got way too much work for the people that are here. Um, we know that inflation has caused um, a tremendous increase in what it costs us to buy things, whether it's paying $60 a gallon for paint as opposed to what used to be 25. Um, so, it boils to me. It boils down to revenue. I mean, I don't. I look through this. I don't see where where we cut. You know, if somebody's got some ideas of of who we cut and where we cut, we better bring it up now, or move on and figure out a way to increase our revenue because we can't we can't reduce our costs. It, it's just not reasonable. I don't see where we do that. Um, so, I mean, that's my take on what I've seen so far here. And, and I have to say that from my viewpoint, this is the most um, transparent process that I've been involved with since I've been on the council, where it's, it's all there and it's easily understandable. And... Um, so I'd like to get to work on on that end of it as, as quickly as possible. Thank you. Um, yeah. Councilmember <clears throat> Landau. Um, so uh, on the um, general fund, uh, the Tidelands, so we are going to be fixing the pier bathrooms? Yes, um, that is the intent with the budget adoption. Okay, and that would start after summer after Labor we Day? We are probably going to be uh, soliciting for construction bids prior to Labor Day weekend, have it all fully executed and ready to go right after Labor Day weekend. Okay, thanks. And then um, the West End pump station, that's not to do the upgrade. Uh, you mentioned 190000 That's So the selling of the Ironwood property would be in addition to what you have slated here? That's correct. Uh, just a few questions. The the West End pump station is that included in the budget to 
get that uh, to redo that, or is that something as part of the ARPA com combined? So with our current available budget, we were only able to allocate $190,000 towards Weston Pump Station. This does not include the ARPA funding. So the 190000 is the band-aids that we need to keep it going. Um, just the critical items and as much as we can afford. Um, and if by any chance we can budget additional money, we could definitely use it for the system upgrades. How critical do you think that is to get that fixed? Or Absolutely critical before the next major rainstorm. Okay. Mayor, if I may, in proposal one that we'll be speaking about here shortly, um, that is one of the proposals in proposal one. Okay. And the, the Prop 68, um, is that a one-time uh, amount or is it every year? I wish it was every year, but this is a one-time amount. It is, okay. That's for the, the Heather Park. Yes. And yeah, I, I agree with uh, Councilmember Kalmick. We have, uh, I mean, as much, I don't think we can go any lower on the personnel. And I think one thing I'd like to factor in also is efficiency, uh, looking at optimizing the way we interact with the department software-wise and uh, you know, just something to consider as part of that. Um, okay, do you want to move on? Thank you, Director Lee. I'm going to move on to the five-year outlook, and I, I, I do feel that I'm reiterating some of this information a little, but um, this is a review of the five-year outlook. Um, you've seen this slide, a little bit of it, when we presented it at the um, City Council workshop, uh, the planning session. Um, this year, the budget is balanced, despite the team's efforts and hard work to balance the budget and maintain a high-quality services that we do. The five-year outlook paints a concerning picture. The forecast indicates that expenditures are growing at an average rate of 4.7%, outpacing the revenue growth of 2.3%. While departments have successfully decreased their budgets by pulling back on educational training, supplies, contract professional where possible, this may have helped in the short term, but further cutbacks are not sustainable. It's important to note the forecast is based on reasonable economic and operational assumptions and does not take into account the potential impact of a future recession or the $250 million in the unfunded needs assessment. Additionally, the forecast is a snapshot in time and changes will occur. Yesterday, we went over the outlook for the largest revenue assumptions as well as salaries, benefits, and retirements, and I wanted to revisit and touch on a few other large ongoing impacts to the city. Property insurance has increased 12.7% 12 12 over the past five years on average. The forecast is built only at 5% growing going forward in the growth. Historical growth is due to costs associated with the peer, with the peer damage. Dem general liability has grown on an average of 11.6%. Overall inflationary pressures and, has, ha and costs have gone up, and this negative impact is not any different for, any, for, for liability insurance. Additionally, workers' comp has increased statewide and regionally. This is something JPIA is working currently on with the cities. Most contracted services citywide have gone up. I, throughout the model, it, it, in all areas, just like Director Lee just mentioned, building maintenance and landscape maintenance, those costs, we know that they're going up. Even when we go out to negotiation, we know they're going up. So I'm just gonna briefly just take, have you take a look at fire services and um, they are being affected by inflation, high costs, and salary increases. And I'm not going to include all of them, but this one is one I, one I can stop on because it's a clear picture. Um, over the past five, year, five years, fire services has experienced an average, average growth of 4.6%, which equates to almost 257000 a year. When you have that hit across all these contracts, then that's where you see this, that big gap getting wider and wider and compounding. The forecast grows on average 3.7%. 
6%, with the bulk in the next two years growing at 4.5%, then leveling back down to 3% due to the anticipated impacts of their recently negotiated MOU agreements and historical costs. So you'll see this you know, through, throughout the, I'm not gonna go through each contract, but you'll see this when we do our analysis in, in the outlook. Yesterday's presentation included an overview of retirement projections, and these two new slides are from CalPERS, and the assumptions are based on the model run as of April 22, 2023, which was just the other day, which showed the negative 6.1% 6 return and what that impact would be. Our re retirement plans are separated by miscellaneous and sworn, which is civilian staff and officers. This slide is the impacts from the, for the miscellaneous group, and the bottom blue lines are the city's funded status. That large arrow on the left bottom, pointing to the blue lines, is the impact of the negative 6.1% return, bringing down the city's funding level from approximately 78%. I can't hear. To I 70%. I can't follow you. It's, it's just. Is it too? I can't follow. It's just going too fast. Okay, I'll slow down. And it's not loud enough. I can't hear it. Let me move my mic. All right, Council. Please. Counsel. Let me know if you can, can you hear me better? I apologize. Just okay. Closer to the mic. Or All right. Least. So those, those two blue lines at the bottom right there, that bottom left orange, is where the, that's the, where the discount rate, um, that negative 6.1%, that's the impact bringing our funded status from 78% to 70%. And according to actuaries, 80% is a healthy status. The assumptions of the blue line shows if CalPERS continued to reach their target of 6.8% returns, what they are currently not at, the city would be fully funded in 2044. The top arrow is the city's rate payment for the miscellaneous group, and that top orange line is the, increased dis the increases we discussed yesterday showing ongoing rate impacts to the city. That top orange line is that bump up of what our rates will be charged going up, and that's about that 500,000 that we discussed. This is the same information, but for the sworn plans. And the safety modeling, again, was ran just a few days ago on April 22nd with the 6.1 assumptions. And I want to note that, again, these do not include the new updated negative 7.5 assumptions that has been confirmed by CalPERS. The same for our safety funds, the blue lines right there, take the sworn from being 77% funded to less than 70% funded. The top orange, orange arrows, the same with miscellaneous, bumps up the fiscal impact, impacts as mentioned yesterday. During the City Council workshop, an ad the additional payment to CalPERS was discussed for the inactive fire plan. We rebuilt the assumptions with the actuary with the updated negative 7.5% return. If we do nothing, costs increase going forward 213,000 a year. If we provide an additional discretionary payment, future payments will lower to 564,000 a year. If this were adopted, it's being proposed in proposal one um, that will be presented later. Along with the lower payments, this provides the city an additional 73,000 in savings and eases the burden going forward in future years. Is everyone understands that that's from the Seal Beach Fire Department days. This was preceding our contracting with Orange County. What does UAL stand for? United Unfunded Airlines. Actuary Liability. I know United for that. Sorry, again? Unfunded Actuarial Liability. So our annual cost for that is Right now, it's 404000 this year. That's what our payment's going to be. If we yeah. prepay it, it's a little bit less. Um, going forward, it was, it was scheduled to be the 404000 for the next six years. So they took our unfunded liability, which was at about $2.2 million, $2.4 million at the time, and it averaged those payments out. But now with that negative 7.5%, it, it bumps it up there. It's a big impact going forward and it's definitely takes a pause. It, it sets you back when you think, when you're looking at that forecast and seeing these big numbers, um, that gap widening, it's, this, this is a big portion of that uh, across the city. Could this change if the rate 
changes. Yes, yeah. and the rate fluctuates. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that you know those rates fluctuates. We had a twenty three point Calpers had a twenty three point one percent return, um, but right now the current earnings structure right now is four point four percent. Um, and that doesn't hit the 6.8 that they're currently anticipating. They're anticipating to end of the year about 4 or 5%. So then, again, we'll have a neg another negative impact. And as long as those unfunded liabilities are sitting out there, those impacts will continue to affect the city. I'll move forward. Thank you. Um, Here's an opportunity for revenue opportunities. Anticipating future expenditures outpacing revenue, city staff have looked at a few opportunities for revenue enhancement with the least impact to our residents. This includes the transient occupancy tax, TOT, or hotel tax. Many coast regions are between the 12% and 14% range, and we're at 12%. Another area is the business license tax. The city basically charges a flat fee for everyone. Other options include gross receipts, a number of employees, or possibly a tiered system. That's another opportunity for us to take a look at. Um, Council Member Steele, you mentioned yesterday, you're, if you have a business, we charge you the same rate as someone that makes you know, a couple hundred thousand. We could do a tiered, tiered system and take a look at that. The city may also explore the implementation of increasing the barrel tax. The city can consider issuing permits for cannabis cultivation, manufacturing, or sales, which can generate significant revenue. Many other cities are exploring cannabis as they are facing the same issues that we are. Additionally, the city can look into increasing the levy for street lighting, which is currently subsidized by the general fund, and right now it's about 68,000 in our budget. Lastly, the city can explore increasing its parking revenue as mentioned by Chief earlier. Next steps. All but parking and cannabis revenue would need to be put before voters. Parking meter violations are typically fines that are imposed as a penalty for violating a parking regulations, such as parking in metered space for a longer than the allowed time. These fines are not considered to be fees or charges for a specific service or infrastructure project, but rather a penalty for violating a rule or regulation. On the other hand, TOT, hotel tax, business license, barrel tax, and levies is a general tax. And you'll hear the term 218 has been used as well as ballot measure. It's often called a 218 because it's the most recent, in this recent initiative. In 1996, California voters added Article 13C. And what that says is that general taxes or special taxes must be approved by a majority vote, 50 plus 1, or special taxes with a two-thirds vote. Before proposing a Prop 218 for any of these, the next steps would be to conduct a resident poll to gauge support for the various proposals. We have in included that, it, that in the revitalization, revitalization plan, we added a new bullet of approximately 50,000 um, to move forward on that action item if the council chooses. If there are no questions, I'll move on to the discussion of the Seal Beach Revitalization Plan. A quick question. <clears throat> so um, with the 218, are we able to lump everything together, or is each? Each would have to be separate. And there's a cost associated with each one of those? Yes. Any other questions? Continue. Thank you, Mayor. In October 22, the City Council set aside $3. million from ARPA. Four proposals were brought forward at the City Council workshop, and today we bring forth those again for discussion. The first proposal includes focusing dollars on critical unfunded one-time needs across the city, includes $250,000 in additional discretionary payments to CalPERS, which will save the city approximately $75,000 in future payments on the new updated assumptions. 400000 is for fiber connectivity for the lifeguard station and PD sta substation. Currently, there is no direct connectivity on a con consistent basis for their phone and internet lines. An additional 100000 to finish water intrusion repairs at the lifeguard substation that has been pushed out to future years. 700000 is set aside for the West End pump station, um, along with what has already been budgeted for, as Director Lee had mentioned. 
350000 is for fleet, and cr currently the city is on a leasing program, and public works and finance staff are working on a feasibility of continuing the program, and that analysis is planned for the upcoming fiscal year. 150000 would be set aside for an OCTA ECU UCU grant, and city staffing needs and assessments were discussed at length at City Council Workshop. 100000 is being proposed to provide a citywide assessment. 150000 is proposed to provide multi-year grant writing assistance. And additionally, as mentioned a few moments ago, 50000 has been included to conduct a resident poll to gauge support for potential revenue updates. That would leave 850000 as a set-aside for future critical needs or any other funding that council de 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 deems appropriate. Proposal 2 includes $3.1 million to the current pool reserve, bringing the reserve to $7.5 million. An additional $11.5 million is needed for pool implementation and rebuild. Proposal 3 includes setting aside $3.1 million for the full replacement of the lifeguard substation. An additional $7.9 million would be needed. And proposal four is to take a pause, set the funding aside, and revisit at another date. Before you is the four options for discussion. These are proposals and can be changed and modified at city council discretion. With that, I'll open it up for discussion or recommendations. Any comments? So the, the 700,000, so in um, proposal one, did I deal with that? Uh, so in proposal one, um, the additional 700,000 for the West End pump station, um, w when the Ironwood property sells, is that money also gonna go to the West End pump station or they don't need as much as that? Short of sounding overly greedy, the Western Pump Station will all, could always use additional improvements. However, uh, with this sub additional $700,000, we could take care of a lot of immediate needs without um, the additional um, a subsidy from the Ironwood property. Okay. I had a, a question on, on fleet management. Um, this would mostly would um, in terms of when we lease a vehicle, it's usually for a specific amount of time, I'm assuming. And the purchases purchase vehicles are basically whenever we feel the need or they're falling apart. Is has the um, have we kept track, so to speak, of of when vehicles need to re be replaced? In other words, if we had it set up to where it's so many years, so many miles, um, have the quality of the vehicles improved so they're lasting longer and maybe that cycle can be extended? So there was a vehicle rep replacement program that was uh, prepared a number of years ago. And um, for the most part, it, it has um, a certain number of years and miles that were recommended on there. Um, generally, uh, it's not recommended to run to failure um, because there is going to be exponential maintenance costs uh, after a certain number of years. So um, we generally want to keep them running and in good resellable condition um, before it gets too costly. Okay, so we're we're keeping we're on top of that. In other words. Mayor Pro Tem Sarsa. Um, I was just going to ask the about the OCTA environment cleanup preparation for grant. Exactly what's what is that involved? Well, thank you for asking that question. So the catch basin inserts are generally what we call ECP Tier One, so uh, environmental cleanup program. 
That is usually for a smaller scale projects such as the catch basin inserts. Now, um, tier two is generally for larger projects. And the last time there was a tier two call was quite a few years ago. So we're talking about projects that are $500,000 and above. Of course, the guidelines have not been released quite yet. So um, I don't know what that limit and threshold is going to be. But the intent is um, we've always had trouble do, um, uh, installing catch basin inserts in particular in the Old Tyne area where we have the storm drain conveyance and to the West End pump station due to grade, meaning it's too flat. So instead of inserting um, catch basin insert, um, I'm sorry, installing catch basin inserts, we want to do a larger scale CDS system. Basically, it's a large centrifugal tank if you will that really collects all the debris before it gets discharged into um, the pump station and released into the San Gabriel River area so it's a larger scale trash collection system if you will that is in the multi-million dollar range so if we are successful with the ECP tier 2 that will alleviate a big burden on um, the city's funds so um, to make ourselves competitive, um, we do want to start off with some design prep so we can have a fully fleshed um, application to submit to OCTA. So this money would be for the design, a uh, preliminary design? I was trying to figure out if it was a, cons I wasn't sure what, what it meant or if it, it, it was a consultant or... All of the above. So it would include grant preparation, preliminary design, and um, and submittal. Okay, so grant preparation means we hire somebody to write the grant? Or? The application is fairly straightforward. Um, our designer and in-house staff could put that together. Put together, okay. I also had a question about uh, the citywide staffing and efficiency assessment. What is involved in that? Uh, yes, Councilmember Sestarsik, if you recall at the strategic workshop, uh, the council, um, uh, actually staff, the directors talked about um, some of the challenges with staffing. This would be sort of sort of like uh, in the vein of succession planning, um, but uh, taking a look at the, the entire organization as a whole. Can you get a little closer to I'm the sorry. Microphone? Taking a look at the organization as a whole uh, and doing an assessment to see if we can find efficiencies and... Uh, um, really kind of planning out uh, and having a roadmap uh, for staffing. Uh, um, uh, I, you know, since I've been here, we really haven't, um, much like our streets and waters and sewers, much of the things that Iris has talked about, um, had um, sort of a master plan for staffing. And so this would accomplish that uh, and um, allow us to more thoughtfully think about staffing, uh, particularly in light of, of what's going on in the market with the competitiveness across the cities. Uh, in terms of recruitment and retaining employees. Okay, so would this be hiring a consultant to do that work? Is that, or is that what That would be for? correct, yes. Would, the, would that include like a deliverable that we have an ongoing strategy to help staff the different departments? The thought is, and there's many ways in which you can do this, but this would be a comprehensive plan where you have actionable items. Uh, you know, we take a look at, um, all of our, our staffing needs as well as sort of what we do in the office and trying to find those efficiencies like you mentioned earlier, not just with software, but um, making sure that we cross train our people properly and identify areas in which we can um, fill in those gaps. Would, would that include looking at interns and part-time staff to help uh, be part of that? I hope so. <laughs> yes, it, it, it would. It would. It would do that. But we, we do that already. Um, if you noticed, um, you know, we have a, a number of part-time folks that help out seasonally. Uh, on occasion, we have them on an interim basis. The lifeguards, obviously. Uh, but it is something we will look at holistically um, and uh, hopefully come up with an organizational assessment that uh, uh, will produce results and not just sit on the shelf. Okay. Still yeah, I'm just going to ask about the multi-year grant writing. That would be hiring someone to help us uh, sub submit ho hopeful grants, or I, 
I, I think that um, probably each department will have um, its different grant needs, but generally speaking, we want to take advantage of BIL, um, the bipartisan infrastructure law, uh, federal grant money that's going to be um, or has started to be injected into the economy. So we want to make sure that we're competitive um, for that money. And what's the time limit on, on, that, on that funding that's coming up? Uh, it has started and it's going to be rolled out over the next few years as well. But um, exact timing for each type of funding, depending on the overseeing agency, is still to be determined. Okay, thank you. Are, were you referring to the uh, federal money that's been in the uh, last stimulus, um, not the March of 2021 stimulus, um, six trillion, but this is? Same thing. It's also known as IIJA as well, the infrastructure. Known as what? The IIJA, the infrastructure, and I forget what it stands for exactly, but um, it's And the, this comes from the federal government and standalone piece of legislation, and they're now passing out money. Uh, competitively, yes. Right. Like rolls of paper towels. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I might, I just... Right. I just would like to, uh, to point out with regard to the storm drain uh, catch basins that this is part of an overall program for all 53 cities that line the San Gabriel River. And um, I think only one city has completed, I think it's La Habra for some strange reason, but uh, the mandate in terms of using these funds and putting those in, uh, it has to be by 2030, which is the good news and bad news is that there's time for us to complete whatever we're going to do. The bad news is we need to do it yesterday. And of course, we need to, um, being the recipient of all the trash that comes down the river, uh, we want to make sure that we're doing our part and, and complete that task on our end. Yeah, I think remembering what happened with the West End pump station, to me that's uh, a high priority to get that resolved. And I think all of these items were suggested by staff and I think they're all very good critical items that we should look at. I guess we. Uh, do we have kind of council consensus on proposal one? Can I make comment? Sure. Um, I feel like we're being, um, in this economy, we are being punished for not spending money. Uh, with inflation going up every year, our buying power decreases by that much. And so it's kind of like we shouldn't be in a rush to spend money, uh, which is totally anti-character for me. I, it's, it's like, I don't fully understand this list of items here. And as you started talking about a couple of these things, it, I realized I don't understand them clearly. So I'm not saying uh, that I don't support these. I'm not saying that I do support these. I'm not saying if we're giving a green light on each one of these individual things right now, if that's what we're voting for, I need more information <clears throat> on some of these things like uh, that, that need to be fleshed out. And I'm not sure if we do that here now in the workshop or if we do this some other time, but I don't have a full understanding of each of these items. But my, my, my unction is to spend the money because a year from now that $3.1 million is going to be worth $2.8 million. And then a year from then it's going to be worth $2.5 million in terms of buying power. I mean, it's just, that's the world we live in right now. So I would be in a hurry to spend this stuff personally. Which, which with greater uh, understanding of what we're dealing with. Which items are you comfortable with? <clears throat> Multi-year uh, grant writing, the citywide uh, staffing and efficiency assessment, uh, the uh, $150,000 for Okta to get us on sh into shape to be able to do grant writing. That sounds, uh, I need to, it, it's not quite material for my brain. Um, I'm okay with the West End pump station, but that is, is that 700,000 going to complete the project or is that just another Band-Aid? 
Uh, if I may chime in on that please. item, um, it is going to cover a lot of the maintenance and operation needs for the near future. Yes. So we're covering maintenance and operation, but these you know, the capital life, or excuse me, the, the the capital life of these assets go on for thirty more years. Correct. So. Um, the station is quite complex. Um, we can do equipment upgrades such as the pumps, the motors, the VFDs, variable frequency drives, the starters, and whatnot. Um, and that will be covered under the $1 million. Now, um, if we want to dig in deeper, um, and I'll be happy to uh, provide pictures and illustrations of what the West End Pump Station really needs, is including um, an expansion of the forebay. And that is a multi-million dollar effort. And frankly speaking, I don't believe that we have the funding capability for it at this time. But this 700000 right here puts us on a path to where maybe for five years we don't need to ask for another 700000 For the equipment needs, no, we do not. We will be able to cover um, not the Not upgrades. the maintenance ongoing operations or broken parts and the things like that. The mechanical upgrades, yes. Right. Okay. So, I mean, that, that helps me to some degree, and I, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't gone there, I haven't laid eyes on it, so it's still a, a concept to me, and and I don't know what flooding looks like in Seal Beach, because I live in Leisure World, and so it's, yeah, we don't see flooding out there. Huh? I'll call you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Council members, Gil, um, we do have a infrastructure tour that we are trying to arrange for um, in a couple weeks. And, yes, uh, I know, that is on the schedule. I apologize. So everybody knows. I, I am getting the tour. <laughs> <laughs> Council member Steele, if I may, um, any of these items that are being brought forth in Proposal 1 would be brought back to Council for um, final uh, adoption that, and moving forward. That would forward. be helpful. That yes. way I can fully so, get my brain around these things. I hate, to, I hate to be a stick in the mud here, but at the same time, if I don't fully understand it and can't really put my brain around it, it's just I'm not, I hope I'm not voting to actually spend that money on these things here today. So I guess this, I think this is voting for the, this is the concept. I'm, I'm then, okay with the con. E then each item will be brought to us for approval. Okay. If that's correct. Is that correct? Yeah, I guess uh, if any of these items you don't think should be on here, we should probably mention it now. Yes. Can I talk about, so the, um, the the grant writing, and we talked about this at the strategic planning meeting, and I think it was OCFA, I'm sorry, I can't remember, was that you? <laughs> um, and that uh, it takes a technical person to do that. We don't have that person on staff, because there are monies out there that we could hopefully obtain, um, and they do it at OCFA, um, but they have a specialized person that, that does the grant writing, so I think that would be money well spent. It's, it's a box and an org chart. And boxes on org charts, once they go on an org chart, they have a tendency to stay there. You know, and it's, is it going to cost $150,000 a year? Council Member Still, we had set that men aside because, like Council Member Landau just mentioned, there's money out there to be to be utilized. Totally agree. Um, so this is a multi-year approach. We actually don't, we don't have a staff person that can look for that money and help us find that money every time we're looking we don't meet the minimum qualifications our population isn't growing we're not the right size we're our demographics you know our you know our, our constituents make too much money and there, there's not there's a, a plethora of reasons but that that will allow us to have a, a professional that does specifically that over a multi-year plan if it continues to work, perhaps we can put it in the budget in future years. Um, but then, if it doesn't, we're not we're not expending our ongoing revenues to, like you said, put a check on an org chart and have it stay there. This would uh, this would allow us to to try and see if it's uh, feasible, and that and we can to see if it's resilient. Councilmember Kalman, um, every morning I get an email that's called Public CEO. Yeah, and it's got all kinds of information, including um, information about grants that are available. And as I've read some of those, you start to see the complexity, as Barbara just you know, uh, alluded to, that 
sounds great. You know, let's apply today. And then it's like there's matching funds that we can't afford to put up or you, the, our city isn't poor enough demographically We're not. to qualify. That's a big problem, I think, for us. We're, we're a small city, but, you know, we're, we're not a poor city or the demographics are not uh, poor. So I think that in, in the best situation that this money would be well spent if we have expertise that gets us a lot more than the 150000 that it would be costing us to go get the money. Because some of these grants can be for many hundreds of thousands or millions, I guess. I mean, well, let's, maybe it's gambling that one day we'll hit the jackpot and uh, get a really big one. Right, Mayor Pro Tem, Mrs. Sarce. I was just going to, I think. Iris addressed this maybe at the strategic planning. I was asking, so how, how hurt are we by not being poor enough? Uh, and you, I think it was you who said that maybe it was a 40-60 kind of, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, a, a lot of the bipartisan infrastructure law funding is carved out for disadvantaged communities. And a lot of the disciplines fall under what we call the Justice 40, which means 40% of an allocation is aimed towards disadvantaged communities. So back to everybody's uh, points, well taken, that um, we don't have the demographics to fall under that. So we would be competing for the remainder 60%, which is a lot more competitive. And it is more strategic of us to hire a grant writer, writer or professional that could target those areas and find those grant opportunities for us and that matches our needs and our demographics. Are Council these Member grant, Steele. I'm sorry. Council Member Steele. Thank you. Uh, are these grant writers, uh, the professional grant writers, the ones who get professionally go out and do this, are they available um, uh, as a consultant would be under a contract? Or would we have to, uh, and so we could allocate $150,000 to one of these uh, uh, out and, and outsource the work basically and hope that we come back with something? Yes, they are going to be outside consultants that would be helping us ID these availabilities or uh, um, and, opportunities. And how much attention can we get from one of these consultants with $150,000? That's a very good question, and it depends on what we apply for. Some grants are definitely more complex, and then there are some opportunities that are one-pager, so it depends what we're trying to apply. Anytime that there's federal funding, there's a lot more complexity, such as environmental clearances, cultural resources, um, and all those things that we have to even clear before an application is complete, or actually deemed complete for consideration. Is part of the process looking at what grants are available? Is that That's definitely the initial phase to see what matches and what's right for us. And I have one last comment on the 900,000. The, uh, the original purpose of the ARPA was to kind of benefit people that were negatively impacted by the uh, pandemic. And I'd like council member comments on putting that money towards our parks uh, and maybe having staff come back with plan proposal one with, uh, in addition, the 900,000 to improving our parks. Mayor Moore, um, the, there was a bullet added for the polling if the council sees fit for the polling of residents to look at revenue opportunities. Okay, that, so 850. So the 850. Yeah. Okay. Nathan could do that for cheap. It's Survey Monkey. <laughs> Any comments on that? Our parks certainly need attention. Um, and maybe staff can present Proposal one as is, and then something else for the, the parks. I'm just, I'm just trying to go through a list in my head of the critical one-time needs that mm. could attack us at a moment's notice. Yes, the other part of this is, 
our money seems to be depreciating, just sitting in there. And if we do something now, it might be worth more than waiting. Oh, absolutely. I agree with that. Maybe, maybe, I mean, let's, let's see what some of those ideas are in terms of Give the, me the particular chair. needs um, of the parks in question. Um, I, I think when we talked about the uh, park improvement program a few years ago using the Proposition 68 money, we were under the impression it was going to be recurring and we we have the four parks that our um, the equipment is gotten to the stage where there's no replacement uh, parts available because of their age. So we had talked about doing that, but I, I have to, I, I, and, and Heather Park is, is, is being uh, looked at now. The trouble is now is that that, that $250,000 doesn't do anything. I mean, it's basically, it used to replace the dot lot, but now it doesn't. So part of the problem is, is that if we divide it up among the four parks that are, you, you know, yours, Marina, and then uh, there's another one in College Park East too, but uh, it, I'm, I'm not sure that it would be enough to, to do very much. That's the only, that's my, you know, my problem right there too is it doesn't, the money doesn't do what it used to do. <clears throat> if we wanted to utilize that money um, for something else, um, do we need to decide what that's going to be allocated for? Would that preclude us from appro you know, approving one of these proposals? No, you can make, we can set that money aside and it can be decided later. The funds, um, like Mayor Moore mentioned, that they initially started with ARPA, but they're actually the one-time general fund, fund balance now that can be used at the council's discretion on any item, and we can bring that back at a later date. So maybe that's what we do for now, just to, uh, have staff pre present proposal one as is and leave the 900000 kind of uh, separate for now. Mayor, may I confirm the bullet for the polling of the residents for additional revenue opportunities? Yeah, I think yeah. that's... Okay. Yeah, include that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May I also ask um, for the park improvements, um, not something that we need to uh, confirm on which locations and which parks quite yet, but would you like a list of recommendations for consideration for further down the road? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Now, would, would that include, because um, I noticed it was buried in here somewhere. Um, Zoder, uh, the ball field, would would that, would this 900,000 include something like the Zoder ball field or is that a separate item that's within another portion of the budget? So Zoder isn't programmed for 23-24, so if the council so desires, we could front load that project with the 900000 as a, a component of the 900000 I mean, I, you know, I'm not pushing for it necessarily. I mean, it, there's no question that I don't think Zoder, uh, the ball field, has been upgraded or, you know, for at least, at least 50 years. Um, and probably much longer than that. But I'm not, I don't have a project um, myself and have no idea what it would cost to change the lights and, and regrade the field and, you know, do whatever it would need to make it look like Irvine or something. Hmm. I went to a park, I went to a meeting in Irvine and, you know, and it was at a park with this nice, beautiful community center and there's, there's Gorgeous ball field and tennis courts. That's and Irvine. <laughs> they got lots of money. That's <laughs> very depressing. The closer you can get to Los Angeles, the lousy it l I mean, lousier it's, it's it looks. Amazing. Um, at the risk of sounding foolish once again in this meeting, uh, the lights at Marina Park for pickleball at night, I'm not sure if that's on a list somewhere or if that's been noticed or if, it, if it's uh, somewhere in the in the... See, there you go. I've done it again. What's that? 
the pickle, the lighting on the pickleball courts. It's been mentioned to me like three or four times, uh, and it's the the pickleball lighting is not up to. It, it doesn't doesn't work very well. It's not bright enough, and I don't know if we mention that now or if we. You mentioned Zoder and grading fields, so I'll mention pickleball lights at, at <laughs> Marina. Okay, and then I'll mention the beach. And yeah. <laughs> Um, absolutely, and thank you for all the great suggestions here. Um, it's in the, your district too, Joe. It's no. not even. It. Oh no. No. Oh, sorry. So we do understand that the um, the lightings um, have been recommended for upgrading in the area, just for uh, to help with pickleball and the angle and the aiming, just for ease of playing and seeing the pickleball itself. And we did get a quote for that for the lighting upgrades and um, it is a matter of funding availability and hoping that um, come next fiscal year that we will be able to incorporate that as well. Um, but uh, we do, in, uh, given the comments that we're hearing tonight, uh, we do intend to work with our community services department and refer to our parks uh, master plan as well. Um, we, we do want to come back with a list that's uh, that's addresses our needs um, at the same time uh, equitable to the various districts as well. Thank you. Um, regarding the, 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 the lights at Marina Park, um, if we were to put better lighting in, then they could play until 10 o'clock at night, right? Um, I don't know about the current park hours, um, but... Um, have, have we gotten complaints? Because that, that park is surrounded by a lot of residents, and I've just, since pickleball has come up, I've started noticing what pickleball is, and it's loud. So... Such a lovely sound. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just wondering, we, you know, we may have to look at weighing the balance between the, the quality of life for the residents around the park versus extending hours of pickleball. Thank you, council member, for that comment. Yes, we, we do know that pickleball is loud and have received similar comments too. So yeah, I, I agree. It's something that we can look at in terms of balancing, balancing the, the two desires to play pickleball later as well as, you know, to have a quiet residential neighborhood. Thank you. Any other questions on the revitalization? Okay. Okay, we'll proceed. Mayor, that actually concludes our budget presentation for the second day's workshop. Uh, was there going to be a fine five-year financial uh, Any motions being made we did go we, we went through that okay. okay any other questions no thank you guys you did an amazing job very impressed okay yeah that's can can uh, my uh, Thanks, uh, really, Barb and your team uh, dragging me through this process and getting my brain around it. It takes me a while, and I know, but I'll get there eventually, and I'll... Uh, it's only taken me four years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, really a lot of work and highly appreciated. Uh, it's very, very good. Uh, so I'm, this year, I'm looking, I'm feeling very comfortable. I'm not looking, feeling good on the five-year, but I'm good this year. I, I okay, go ahead. Uh, no. No, me? Um, I, I got out the, the five year that we were given last budget session and we had an, uh, I think it's the same 27, 28, uh, deficit of like half million dollars. Now this one is five and a half million dollars. Is that, does this include CIP? I believe the last one did not include CIP. This me, one. Uh, that's an excellent question, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I went through that with a fine tooth comb, and um, a lot of what they did was they balanced, you know, on average, you know, an economic growth of say three percent for revenues and then three percent for expenditures, and they did that a lot across the board. I've actually looked at our historical as well. What we did this year is we actually met with departments when we started building that unfunded needs assessment and went down to the line item. 
How much do we think that building maintenance contract is going to be? How much do we think that janitorial contract is going to be? And then calculated each of those based off of that growth and, and not as a whole. Not We didn't take property tax as a whole and just roll it across. We said, how are each of these areas going to impact us in the future? How is each, you know, contracts for the maintenance and operations, um, for staffing, for part-time staffing? We looked at each line level. So if you look through it, you'll... In, you know, I have a spreadsheet that says percentage, percentages, and they're all over. Um, example, the fire one I showed earlier. And the reason why I gave that example is because for the next two years, we anticipate it's going to be the full 4.5% because we know the MO negotiations were, were healthy. And um, we, need to, we need to account for what the, that impact is going to be going forward. But then in years four through five and going forward, we don't have it built out at the 4.5. We've dropped it down to 3%, 3%, then 1%. And that's because we anticipate things are going to cool over the next couple of years. So we accounted for that. Also with, you know, for TOT, we know there's some mandated mandates um, that, uh, Director Smittle's working on that we know STRs are coming online. We know that there's a housing element that we're looking at, and we anticipate in 25, 26 there might be a little more pressure in there. So when I looked at last year's, I did look at that, and I and I had a feeling that question would come about um, that the the gap was so much smaller. But I don't think they included the re the the deep level that we have this year on the Calpers increases, um, and not a lot of people know that there's that. The tool out there, and we work very closely um, with our actuaries. Actually, um, Carrie Worgan has presented to this council. Um, he is a, he's a phone call away, and I can ask you know the hard questions like what is what are we earning today? He responds right away. So we built those assumptions in here this year that we didn't have in the past. Okay, thank you. That is a big. A little shocking going from half a million to it, it, five. It is, yeah. Point five. And our, you know, our staffing, it, it se if it's 47% now, it seems like I think I remember 56. it being. 56. It's 47 now going to 56. 56. And that, you know, that, that our includes uh, health our insurance, OPEB, I yeah. mean, that, CalPERS includes. Our 40, uh, we were 47% this year, and we were 47% last year. That's what I thought, but you calculated 56. No, out in the fifth year is what I'm referring to. Oh, in the fifth year. In the fifth year, it's at 56%. Yeah, it's just, that's, I mean, that comes with a lot of stuff when you're talking about personnel. Of course, expenses are, for public works are expensive. I know things are expensive. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other comments? We'll have we'll have an opportunity to work on that at some other time, right? Yeah. Not okay. here. In this work session. As far as the five-year outlook and forward thinking on that, and um, yes, um, Councilmember Still, the five years it's a snapshot in time today. Um, as we come into the next budget, our departments are already planning for next year. They're already looking at. Um, you know, I, an example is uh, Chief Bailey. I, I took his supply budget <laughs> and slashed it, and he said, yeah, I'm going to come take yours. And, I, you know, we kind of bantered <laughs> back and forth. He's going to steal our supplies. Um, we're looking out at the future. Um, Chief, actually, um, right before the meeting, when I was trying to practice my notes, came in and talked about how this coming year we're going to be doing monthly assessments and how he's already building in his budget and what he's how that impact is going to go long term. I don't know, Chief, if you want to talk about the overtime assessment, but um, it's it's something that we're looking at now because we know next year is going to come and we're going to be faced with the same crisis. We're going to have to begin to cut back, um, as I mentioned in the presentation. As we continue to cut back and cut back, we don't really have any more place to cut. Um, like mentioned, I took Joe Bailey's uh, supplies away. Well, next year, that budget isn't there. So if he asks for the budget, I'm going to say, well, last year you didn't have it, so this year you don't have it, and now I need you to cut more, and now you need to figure out where that's going to be. And those are the conversations we had this year. We had nine rounds of this. Um, next year, it's not going to be as easy. The mandated costs that you see forward aren't costs that we're increasing. The fire, the Calpers, the you know, the the all the benefits, you know, those expenses, insurance costs. We again had peer damage. We know that those costs are going to go up. Um, 
that puts continued pressure onto what we can spend on, our discretionary spending. I think I mentioned that, that um, out of that 57%, 63 is non-discretionary. So that gives us a teeny amount of what we can spend on. Um, in, in a, an example of my budget is I need, we really need our new staff members to be trained and go to these trainings, to go to the government finance officers, to, to meet with others and see what, 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 what's out there um, and see how they can do better business. Um, but when we pull back, I had to give up some of that money to balance our budget so that, well, what, what training are they gonna get to go to? So that's something that we're looking at. But we are looking at it long term. Chief, did you wanna talk about the overtime or? Thank you, Director Arenado. Yes, um, so I think like all uh, department heads and directors, we're looking at our departments to find efficiencies for what we already have. Uh, th I think this budget, like many past budgets, has been consistent in what services we have to provide and what, um, what we have to spend to provide those services. But I think within each department, we're all looking for efficiencies um, to squeeze more blood from the turnip candidly and it's uh, something we're all doing on a department level and uh, we're doing it in the police department the overtime budgets remain fairly consistent but as salaries and benefits go up the usable hours of overtime available to the department actually decreases so we still have to find ways to deliver services within those constraints and I know in speaking with my fellow department directors they're all doing the same thing Will you, will you come back at the midterm uh, budget review with kind of analysis of the f five year? Yes, Mayor, we can do that. We're, we're going to be looking at this regularly. Um, I think what the impacts are that we're becoming so lean, um, service impacts will happen if if we, we don't take action. Right. Council Member Kalman. Thank you. I think what what kind of has become a apparent to me is that we are victims of, of our own desires. You know, our community has fought for years to remain a small community. We've, we've turned away big box stores. We've, uh, we've turned away other entities that would bring a lot of revenue. We don't have hotels to speak of. We don't have, um, you know, much in the way of visitor serving other than our main street and, and, uh, and those areas that serve the communities north of the freeway, like the Target Center and, the, and Rossmore Center. But, you know, a lot of those desires are now coming home to roost because, you know, we can control what we don't want to build to a certain extent. That's becoming more difficult now, of course. But um, we can't control the overhead. We absolutely can't. I mean, I think that, I think it's been demonstrated pretty clearly to all of us that um, there isn't a department in this room and a department head that we can ask to, uh, you know, you need to cut back on your personnel because we, we, we just, I, I just think the evidence is there that we need every body that we have and we are fortunate that we seem to have their loyalty as well to continue to work hard um, in the face of not having enough people to do so many of the tasks that need to be done. And, but, you know, if, who knows, if we had approved a Costco or a Home Depot that was proposed years ago, uh, where we would be, or if we had um, not down zoned as much as we've down zoned where we would be, but here we are and nobody's to blame, but I think we have no choice but to, uh, to ask ourselves how much are we willing to pay to live in Seal Beach? Um, you know, when I look at the, the utility tax that has been, you know, sort of attacked you know, from, we haven't heard much lately, but over the years to the point where I think we lowered it by 1%, which in retrospect, I, I think maybe was a mistake. But, um, you know, I always called it the, the, the fee for living in Seal Beach. 
And, and that, I mean, we can look at it that way and say, okay, then we need to tax ourselves or raise our parking fees or our parking permit fees and uh, do everything we can uh, to try and recover from the increasing overhead or to keep pace with the increasing overhead. So I think, again, we unfortunately are gonna have to, to take a look at that direction. How much do we, as individuals that live here, want to pay for that privilege and keep the services that we have? I mean, we could just cancel landscaping. I mean, we could. The trees will continue to grow. The grass will grow. And some people will get their lawnmower out, and they'll go and mow their little section that faces the green belt. I have to laugh because down at the end of the boardwalk where the sand ends, and then there's a a block, half a block that's that's grass, um, there are some of the residents that don't look at it and don't care, and then there's other residents that have mowed the lawn, um, just the part that's in front of their house. If they don't look that way, they're in good shape. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't, I've, you know, thought and thought and thought, but I haven't been able to come up with anything in, in, in my own mind that suggests that there's a way out that isn't gonna cost us more money to live here. Thank you. Right. Councilmember Steele. Um, my life was on cruise control until last weekend, no. <laughs> <laughs> till I ran for office and I'm here and I'm having a ball being here. I love being a part of this. Uh, although my weekend was spoiled when I got to that five year and that five and a half million dollar hole. Uh, and you come up, we, we had to make up a two million dollar hole this, this year and we did it beautifully, but you can't do those kind of cost savings every single year. It just doesn't happen that way. Uh, and I'm, I'm, like to be proactive as opposed to reactive and i'd like to get ahead of you know year three at a million year four at two million and year five at five and I, I like to get ahead uh, with all sources new revenue sources perhaps um you know how are we going to manage it i don't know i honestly don't know um what i saw was that in this year that ROR, retirement, other personnel costs, and the third one, and the it's all people related. That's all to our people, the people that have worked for this city, the people that are, are working for this city, and that number goes from 47% of our current budget to 56% of our budget in the year five. And I don't know how to solve that one, I don't know where the solution is on that one. Uh, and it's, we just got to get creative, especially on the revenue side, figure out how we can cover all of those costs. So I'll leave it at that and we can discuss that further at some point down the, the road. But this is a, a high priority in my, in my mind. I mean, I think the council approving the 50,000 for the polling is part of that, uh, you know, is it kind of a uh, agreement that we're trying to do something. And so 50,000 50, for what? For the polling and polling as oh, the Prop 218. With the professional polling. Um. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I agree with Councilmember Kalmick and steel that it's tough situation but I, you know we've we've been when i started it was pretty tough situation with less staff so we'll get through it and uh, uh I, I think that the i just want to say that the the financial department did a tremendous job with the yes. the budget the graphics and it made it very easy to understand and uh, i think it was very clear to everyone so thank you for putting everything together. And that's all. Is there any other comments? Okay, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting.
Uh, we'll adjourn the City Council to Monday, May 8th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. to meet in closed session if deemed necessary. Thank you.